Today we're going to be talking about diabetic ketoacidosis, known as DKA. This is a 34-year-old male with a history of diabetes who walked into the emergency department complaining of not feeling well. The nurse did an immediate finger stick and it was 4.30. He had a fruity odor on his breath and he looked sick. I immediately suspected DKA. DKA is an acute life-threatening condition caused by insulin deficiency. It normally occurs in patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus. DKA is defined by three things. Number one, hyperglycemia. Number two, ketonemia. And number three, metabolic acidosis. Normally, the serum glucose does not exceed a thousand milligram per DL. Also, ketones, which is a byproduct of fat metabolism, is more accurately measured in the blood than the urine. And finally, the pH is in the acidotic range with low serum bicarb. Usually, non-compliance with insulin is the main cause of uncontrolled elevation in serum glucose. However, there may be also precipitating factors such as infection, myocardial infarction, alcohol abuse, pregnancy, new onset diabetes, extreme stress, trauma, stroke, and gastrointestinal bleed. When insulin is not available, glucose circulates in the blood and can't get into the cells for metabolic use. Blood glucose ultimately gets elevated. But even though serum glucose is high, the cells are starving. As a result, free fatty acid is used to provide energy for cellular function. The byproduct of free fatty acid utilization, which is lipolysis, is ketones and it is regarded as ketoacid. The presence of ketones in serum causes a widening of the anion gap. The anion gap is the difference between the sum of the cations minus the sum of the anions. The formula is sodium minus chloride plus bicarb. The normal gap is between 8 to 12 milliequivalent per liter. When there is an elevation in ketones, the anion gap becomes wide. The acronym MUD piles has been developed to represent wide anion gap. M represents methanol and metformin. U represents urea. D represents DKA and starvation. P represents fenformin and peraldehyde. I represents isoniazid and iron. L represents lactic acidosis. E represents ethylene glycol and S represents salicylates. The absence of intracellular glucose causes the body to release counter-regulatory hormones, namely glucagon, catecholamines, cortisol, and growth hormone. These regulatory hormones further increase serum glucose levels and they all work against insulin. When blood pH drops and acidosis sets in, intracellular potassium exits the cell into the extracellular space, thereby causing hyperkalemia. Please note that hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis both cause hyperosmolar states and osmotic diuresis. 
This leads to volume depletion and electrolyte loss. This patient has severe abdominal pain with associated nausea and vomiting. The symptoms associated with hyperglycemia are blurred vision, polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia. The symptoms of DKA include nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and fruity breath. His physical examination revealed a blood pressure of 105 over 65, heart rate of 120, respiratory rate of 30, and a temperature of 101. The neuro exam shows that he was alert and oriented times 3 with no focal deficits. On examination of the mouth, his mucous membrane was dry with good dentition, however, he had fruity breath. The eye exam revealed pupils were equal, round, and reactive to light, and the extraocular muscles were intact. The lungs shows that they were clear to auscultation, and there was bilateral air entry, however, with tachypnea. The heart exam shows that there was S1, S2 present with tachycardia. The abdominal exam shows it was soft with diffuse tenderness and positive bowel sounds. On extremities, there was no bony tenderness and no pit in edema, and the skin shows poor skin turgor. The diagnosis of DKA is based on three things. Number one, glucose greater than 250 mg per DL, bicarb less than 15 milliequivalent per liter, and pH less than 7.35. Additional labs of significance include, number one, wide anion gap due to ketones, number two, hyperkalemia due to metabolic acidosis, and number three, if glucose is very high, then sodium may be low. For every 100 milligram per DL increase in glucose, the sodium decreases by 1.6 milliequivalent per liter. It is important to know that even though serum potassium is elevated due to the extracellular shift, intracellular potassium is depleted. With time, serum potassium becomes low because of renal loss. Remember, excess glucose has an osmotic effect in the kidney and causes diuresis. As water is lost, so also is potassium. This accounts for the dehydration, poor skin turgor, hypertension, tachycardia, and sunken eyes seen on physical examination. How should a patient in DKA be treated? Number one, check the ABCs. Number two, connect the patients to the cardiac monitor with oxygen and pulse oximeter. Number three, begin fluid resuscitation with normal saline. Number four, start an insulin drip. Usually, it's 100 units of regular insulin in 100 ml of normal saline. The rate of infusion is determined by the weight of the patient. Number five, monitor the glucose level while the insulin drip is in progress. Once the glucose level reaches 250 mg per DL, switch to D5 normal saline to avoid hypoglycemia. Number six, supplement potassium before serum potassium becomes dangerously low. Number seven, Obtain a venous blood gas to determine the pH. And number eight, obtain an EKG and a chest X-ray. How do you monitor if the patient is improving? We monitor patient's improvement through the anion gap. If the gap is closing, the patient is improving. The appropriate disposition of the patient is to admit 
to the ICU or the telemetry unit. Well, thanks for listening and I hope you will feel more comfortable taking care of the DKA patients. I wish you well. Good night.